Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. I work with a lot of starting filmmakers um, who are just starting with Resolve, and I noticed a very important pattern. Uh, whenever, you know, when you start with Resolve and you open Resolve and you want to work with it, you get sucked in by flashy controls. Like, for example, when you open Resolve, you have the color wheels. From a beginner's perspective, it looks very, very interesting. Then you move to the color bars, and they look unbelievably more interesting and flashy, and you get drawn to them. Then you see curves, and you go, wow, unbelievable. And then you see the hue versus hue curve, which looks really cool. So you get sucked into all these very cool-looking effects. However, there are another set of effects. The other effects are very important, very powerful but they just don't have flashy controls. So I noticed that a lot of filmmakers, uh, they just start with the flashiest thing they can start with, like they open the image and they like color wheels now. So now we're going to be taking a look at some of the other controls that aren't as flashy, but they're very important, very powerful, and pros use them all the time. So let's start. So let's take a look at the Resolve interface here. These are the color wheels, look very flashy and interesting. However, just below the color wheels, you have these basic controls. And these controls are divided into two separate sections. In the first section here, I have things like contrast, pivot, saturation, hue, and luma mix. However, if I click the number two here, I open another set of controls. So you have temperature, tint, mid-tone details, color boost, shadows, and highlights. The problem these controls face is that they don't look very prominent, they don't look very sexy, and frankly, when you look at them, most new filmmakers would totally ignore this part here. However, let's take a look on how these controls can really make your work much faster. So the first thing I want to do here is to explain every one of these controls and then we get back to saying how they work together, how you can use all these controls together to work with your image. So let's start. The first control is contrast. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are already familiar with contrast. Contrast simply make the bright areas in the image brighter and the dark areas in the image darker. It's as simple as that. The white objects will become whiter, the dark will become darker. The next control is pivot. Pivot determines the point where contrast look at and consider, you know what, everything above this point, I'm going to be considering white and just move up. And everything below this point, I'm going to be considering dark and just move it down. So this changes that particular point. So for example, I'm going to increase contrast a lot in this image here. Take a look at the image. And now take a look when I control the pivot controller to the left or right. Note how I'm making the contrast adjustment emphasize a certain part of the image. For example, note when I got the pivot all the way to the right, now the contrast adjustment is emphasizing the window, the area outside the window. However, if I go back to pivot and pull it to the left, now I'm emphasizing his face. And if I pull it even further, I can, for example, emphasize his clothes. So pivot determines the point that contrast uh, considers to be the middle point and it pushes everything up or down from that particular point. Let's reset. The next point here is saturation, which I guess is pretty self-explanatory, just more saturation, less saturation in the image. And we're going to be skipping hue and luma mix here because it's very rare for these two controls to be used in uh, standard color uh, correction or grading. Then let's take a look at the second set of controls. I'm simply going to click on number two here and I just opened the second set. The first controller we have here is temperature, which simply controls how warm or cool the image look. So if I pull it to the left, the image simply becomes more blue, cooler image, and if I pull it to the right, it's a warmer image. Let's reset. Then we have the tint controls. The tint control simply works the same way as temperature. However, instead of making the image cooler or warmer, it just controls how green the image is. Just look at it this way. It simply balances green with magenta. However, most of the time, you're going to be thinking of it as the green controller. So if I come to tint here, pull it this way, this is a greener image, pull it to the right, this is a less green image, which automatically makes it look more magenta. -like. Reset. Then we have the mid-tone detail controller here. 
Think of mid-tone details as um, a variation on the contrast adjustment. It just adds contrast around the edges in your image. You can simply pull it to the right, which gives the image more of an HDR look. Of course, this is pseudo HDR. We're not really working with actual HDR material, but it gives this HDR-ish look to the image. And if I pull it to the left, I'm actually reducing the contrast in the image around the edges, which is a different look. So let's reset. Then we have the color boost controller. Now, in the beginning, color boost will look a lot like saturation. So if I increase color boost, I'm increasing saturation, lowering color boost, I'm lowering saturation. Now, color boost is really different than, than saturation. However, in this particular case, we need to understand one thing about color boost, is that color boost mixes the original colors of the image with the modified colors. What does that mean? For example, I'm simply going to come to temperature here and make the image really yellow. So I changed the colors of the image and I made it really yellow. Now, I'm going to go back and click on the first set of controllers here to open saturation and reduce saturation all the way. And notice that when we reduced saturation, we ended up with a black and white image. Now, what does that tell you? It simply means that the uh, saturation controller happened after we changed the temperature. So we first made the image really yellow. Then the uh, saturation controller, when we reduced it, it just reduced all the colors in the image. However, let's reset the saturation controller by double clicking on it and then going back to the second set of controllers to color boost. And now notice something very important. If I reduce color boost all the way down, we do not end up with a black and white image we actually end up with a yellow image. And if I increase color boost, I'm getting a lot of the original colors from the image back, which means that in this particular case, you can simply think of color boost as a way to balance the original colors from the image with the new changed colors of the image. Then we have the shadows and highlights controllers, which as its name implies, let's reset, controls the shadows and highlights. These two controllers are really useful for shadow and highlight recovery. For example, sometimes you might go to contrast and add a lot of contrast until you lose information and highlights. Let's add more contrast here and note that now we lost information and highlights. However, I can simply click on number two here, go to the highlights controller or drag it down and note how I recovered some of the information and in highlights. Take a look at the original image and the new one. And I also lost a lot of information in shadows. I can simply go to the shadows controller here, drag it to the right, and I'm recovering information in shadows. And that was an overview of each and every individual effect here. However, how do we use these effects together? Because Here's what happens. You have a lot of controls, you have a lot of effects, and you don't know where to start. Like, should you start with contrast? Should you start with saturation? What should you do? Now, I just want to emphasize that this is art and not science, which means that whatever I'm going to tell you here regarding this particular thing, the, the, the workflow, is my personal opinion. This is how I usually do it, and I'm sure a lot of filmmakers have different ways of doing this. However, this is my personal uh, workflow that I usually use. Let's start working with this image, for example. I'm just going to reset here, right click, and make sure I reset all grades and nodes. And now let's start working on this image. Usually, my workflow is very simple. I start with the first set of controllers, so the first page, and I start this way, contrast, pivot, saturation. So I start with contrast, then pivot, then saturation. And I do not control hue and luma mix at all. Then I switch to the second page and I also go from left to right. So temperature, tint, mid tones, details. A lot of the time I just skip it, then color boost, shadow and highlights. So we're simply working from left to right. However, when you work from left to right, usually these controls are connected, which means that once you change something down the line, it will affect something you um, worked on at the beginning of your work. So that's why I use phases. So here's the deal. I go from left to right with these controllers and I call that phase one. Then I go back again, controlling the same controllers, also from left to right. Okay, again, for the same controllers again, 
and that will just balance the image much better for me. Let's take a look at an example. So let's start working with this image. I'll simply come to the contrast controller here and drag it left and right until I reach a point that I think is good for contrast adjustment. Yeah, much better. Then I'm going to move to pivot and again left, right until I find a point that I think is good for me. Now, one of the questions here is what would you consider a good point for a contrast adjustment? Like, for example, I decided for some reason that this particular point here in pivot is actually a good place to have my pivot control. This is a good value. Well, if you take a look at the image, you have a lot of objects in the image. So you need to ask yourself a very important question. What's important in this image? What exactly am I trying to achieve? What am I trying to emphasize in this image? So for example, I decided that this is a good point here because I was actually focused on her face. So, for example, if I take the pivot point to the right, note that this is a great point for the window outside, but her face just became a bit unclear here in this image. And if I move the pivot to the left, now, you know, it's just very bright and her face is just bright as an, in an unnatural way. So, whenever you work with contrast and pivot, the number one question you need to ask yourself is what am I trying to emphasize? So in this particular case, I'm just going to move the pivot controller until I find a good setup here for pivot where her face looks natural. Then I'm going to control saturation, reducing saturation, increasing saturation, and just trying to balance things and much better. And then I'm going to ignore hue and luma mix and move to the second page here. And I'm going to start working with temperature. So I click temperature, pull it to the right, to the left, until I find find a good point. I guess this is a good point for me. This is an image I like. However, again, this is pretty subjective. You might be working on the same image and you might click on temperature here and you decide that this here is a better look for you. There is nothing wrong with that. All what's happening here is that personally, I like this point here. I just like it to be a bit bluish, the image. Then again, remember, tint will control the green, how green the image is. So if I pull it to the left, more green. To the right, less green. I think this is a good point here. I'm going to ignore mid-tone details and I'm just gonna go to color boost. Again, there is no right or wrong here. I'll simply pull it to the left, right, till I reach a point that I think is good for this image. And finally, we can recover information with shadows and highlights. So this is the shadows. No, this is a good point here. And then highlights, I'm going to pull it to the left a bit. Take a look at this part of the window here. When I pull it to the right, I'm losing information outside the window. To the left, I'm recovering information outside the window. Now, that was phase one or run one or whatever you want to call it. So I controlled all these parameters from left to right. Now I'm going to repeat everything one more time. And I personally call this phase two. So I'm simply going to click on one here again, go to contrast and again, control contrast up or down a bit, much better. The pivot, maybe we can change it a bit. I'm just going to go to saturation now and down up. Yeah, this is much better. Move to uh, the second controller temperature. Yeah, just a bit to the right tint, much better. Ignoring mid-tone details for now. Color boost down up, much better. Shadows, I think this is a good point and highlights one more time. Now take a look at the original image and the new image. Again, one more time, take a look at the original image and the new one. Now note how much of a difference we, we managed to make to the colors of the image. Uh, the colors look way better, again, before, after. And the important thing is that we did all this without touching the quote unquote flashy controllers in, in, in Resolve. So we did not use the color wheels in any way. We didn't use curves. We didn't use a uh, hue versus saturation curve, nothing. This was all done with these little controllers down that most starting filmmakers usually ignore. And, and that's totally understandable. I mean, if you're starting to use a new software, you're naturally going to be gravitating towards uh, the flashier, cooler looking controls in, in, in the software. So if you like this, please visit us at filmsimplified.com, where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course, um, which is simply the easiest and fastest way to get you started with Resolve. The course covers all the aspects of Resolve, so uh, it's not simply about color grading. You have different sections where every section is dedicated to a certain tab in Resolve. So you have uh, a section only for editing, a section for compositing, a section for color grading, audio, the whole thing. So please visit us at filmsimplified.com. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com.